So let's create a new empty with Control Shift N, call it player and add an icon to it so that we can see it in the viewport. Let's move our camera inside of this player object and reset its position. Now let's add a new player script to it. To do that, you can press add component here and type player, or you can open the search window with Control K and type add. And here you can actually see that there is also a Control Shift A shortcut for it. So this window is pretty useful for discovering shortcuts for commands. And also sometimes it's just faster than clicking through menus. If you go to preferences and click search, you can see that there is some stuff here that you can configure. I've personally switched the priority of menus because that's what I usually use it for. Oh, and I've also changed the hotkey itself from Control K to Shift A because it's easier to press with the left hand. So in our player script, we can clean it up a little bit. And the first thing that we're going to add is the ability to look around. To do that, we're going to add a new 2D vector called look. And each frame, we're going to add mouse input to it. If you go to project settings, input manager, you can see that this is where these uh, mouse X and mouse Y axes are defined. There are also horizontal and vertical axes here that we're going to use later. If we log this to console, we can see that the values are actually changing. Now it's going to be a little bit hard to see that we're actually looking around without any scene. So let's add a cube as a ground. And let's also add some texture to it, just for fun. Fun fact, when you drag a texture onto a model, Unity will automatically create a material for you. We can then go and tweak some settings like, for example, increase the tiling. And let's also add another one for the wall. If you hold V on your keyboard, you can snap vertices. Unity stores rotations as quaternions. And to modify the rotation, we need to make a new quaternion. And the easiest way for us to do that is through a static quaternion Euler method. Here we're passing look x, which is the horizontal mouse movement, as the y component, which is the axis perpendicular to the ground. Now for the vertical rotation, we're actually going to be rotating the camera and not the player object itself. For that, we're going to need a reference to our camera from the player script. One way of doing it would be to just add a serialized field of the transform of our camera and then just drag the camera onto the field in the editor. Now we can change the rotation of that transform with our look y value. Now we can look around freely, but we can also see our mouse cursor while we're doing it. To fix that, let's set the cursor lock state to locked in our start method. And also right now we can do a complete 360 when looking up or down. To avoid that, let's just clamp our look y value to some number that is close to 90. So this is our look logic. We can move it into its own method to keep things nice and organized. And the movement logic is going to have its own method as well. First of all, I'm going to create a new float for the movement speed. In our movement method, we're going to take the horizontal and vertical input from the keyboard. And we're going to make an input vector by adding the vector pointing forwards from the player multiplied by Y, which is our W and S keys. And of course, adding a vector that is pointing to the right multiplied by X, which is our AD keys, so that we can strafe. Then we're clamping this input vector to one so that we don't move diagonally faster than we move normally. And then finally, in the last line, we're actually moving our player with a call to transform translate with our input multiplied by movement speed and multiplied by time delta time so that the movement is not frame rate dependent. So now we can move around, but of course the problem is we can also go through the walls because there is no collision on our player. To fix that, let's add a character controller component and let's get a reference to it with the get component call in our awake method. It's a good practice to put all of the get component calls into the awake method and not start because all of the awake methods are guaranteed to be called before all of the start methods. And now instead of calling transform translate, we can call controller move here. And with this change, as you can see, we can't go through walls anymore. But as you can see, we're still hovering in the air. Let's add a new vector for velocity and also a new float for our player's mass. For the gravity, we're going to make a new method called update gravity. On the controller component, there is a handy is grounded property, and we're using it to determine the velocity's y component the vertical velocity. If we're grounded, we're going to set it to just a small negative value so that we keep the ground contact. And if we're not, we're going to gradually accelerate with the gravity y value, which itself is defined as physics gravity vector times player's mass times delta. And finally, we're going to add this velocity to our controller move call. 
the character controller component will handle slopes and steps for you, so you can go ahead and test that. And also, now that we have the velocity vector, it should be pretty easy for us to implement, for example, jumping. All we have to do is add a new float for the jump speed. And in the update movement, we can add it to our vertical velocity if the jump button is pressed and if we are grounded.